Okay, welcome to this video. Please watch in HD. We are going to see a new kind of problem involving power. Instead of having a horizontal surface like that, now we have an incline. Okay. So let's read the problem and get started. We have a person pushing a 45 kilogram block. Mass is 45 kilograms up a 31 degree incline that's 31 degrees at a constant velocity hmm constant velocity so the forces balance the total the net force is zero and the forces balance and the value of the constant velocity is 1.4 1.4 meters per second. Uh, this is not very well stated in the problem, but future problems will say something like, the person's force is directed up the ramp. So when you hear something like that, you'll know that we have a force by the person pushing up. And I'm going to call it F sub person. Or maybe I'll short it, shorten it to FP later, F sub P. -P. Okay, now we're lastly given the value of the coefficient of kinetic friction. Mu k is 0 0.2. All right. Then we are asked to find, oops, move this over. Whoa, look out. Then we are asked to find the value of the power developed by the person. That's our unknown. <clears throat> Hang on a second. Mu is 0.2. Like that. Okay, we have two equations for power, right? Two equations that we've seen. One equation is this. The other equation is this. We know power is a scalar, therefore everything else in the equation we treat it as a scalar. So F here is really just the magnitude of the force. V is the magnitude of the velocity or the speed. D is the magnitude of the displacement. Right? So that we have just scalars. <coughs> so we're consistent. We have all scalars in our equation. And these two equations I just wrote down, they only apply when the angle between the force and the displacement is zero degrees. So is that true in this case? I mean, the person's force is pushing up the ramp. What about the distance? Well, yeah, if it's moving at a constant velocity up, then the distance is directed upward as well. The displacement is directed up the ramp. And the angle between the red and the black arrow is zero. OK, then, good. So we've confirmed, we just confirmed that the two equations written down here, which I just circled in red, those are valid for this situation. But which of the two do we want to use? Well, we've been given the velocity, so we're going to use the equation with magnitude of velocity, with speed. I can erase the first equation, and we are almost ready to get started. Notice that we're not just finding general power. We are specifically finding the power of the person. So I really like to remind myself of that fact by putting subscripts. Here's why subscripts are so important. If we're finding the, the power of the person, then the value of F right here has to be the force of the person. If you were to plug in like the kinetic friction here, and if the kinetic friction didn't equal the person's force, then you would not be calculating the correct answer. So it's really important to plug in the value of the person's force. All right, so we see by inspecting the equation, we will want to find that right there as our unknown, so I put a question mark. We need to know two things to find the power of the person. <clears throat> One thing is the force of the person, and the other thing is the speed. We have the speed, but we don't have the force of the person. So before we even uh, use this equation, before we do, we are going to first find the person's force. And then once we find the value of the person's force, we'll plug it along right there, plug it in along with the value uh, of, what is it, 1.4 for the speed. Right? That's the value we were given. 
Let's get to it then. Let's find the person's force. We are going to use the fact that the forces balance in order to find the person's force. We're going to use that fact. So what are the other forces? Let's first draw the other forces on the block. We always have gravity pulling down. And let me put mg over a bit on the side. mg, the normal force, pushes off the ramp. Is there friction? Hmm. Oh yeah, there is, because the problem gave us the value of the coefficient of friction. So there's some roughness to the surfaces, and as the block slides up, it feels kinetic friction. Now we already know from last unit, we don't leave gravity like this. Instead, we break it into its components. There's a tilted y component and a tilted x component. This angle here is the same 31 degrees as the incline angle. This tilted x component is mg sine 31 degrees, and the tilted y component is mg cosine, because that y component forms the angle, so it's adjacent. Whoops. Cosine. And the two components, one is on the tilted x, one is on the tilted y axis, so they're at right angles to each other. All right, with mg is the hypotenuse. Okay, now that I drew those components in, I can get rid of my, I can kind of squiggle out my mg arrow, because I already broke it into the components. It's done. That part is finished. So how do we find the person's force through all this? Oh yeah, the forces balance which means that any forces pointing to the right up the ramp, there's one, will balance the forces pointing down to the left, down the ramp. Okay, So let's write the equation, let's write down that equation. Forces pointing to the left, kind of tilted left, forces pointing this way, balance the forces pointing uh, up to the right, up the ramp. Balance the forces pointing that way. So what points to the left? I already circled them. It's FK and this component, MG sine 31. So let me add those up on that side. FK plus MG sine 31 degrees. And what points to the right up the ramp? It's just the person's force. Okay, so I'm just going to call it F sub P like that. What about Fn, uh, Fk, rather? Well, we know it's equal to mu times the normal force, but the normal force, the normal force balances something. What does the normal force balance? Ah, yes, it balances the tilted y part, the tilted y component of mg. So the normal force, then, is equal to the mg cosine 31. And here in my red box, right here, instead of putting Fn, I'm actually going to write down what Fn equals mg cosine 31. And we'll see that this allows us, uh oh, this allows us to calculate uh, the applied force. So there, this whole thing is all equal to Fk. I replaced Fk with mu times the normal force. And then I need to finish up the equation plus mg sine 31 degrees, like that. I'm not going to plug values in. I'm not going to worry about showing that step. Um, I know you know how to plug in values. Mu is 0.2, mass is 45, right? So this is 0.2, the mass is 45. G, you want to use 9.8 here. It doesn't say to use 10, so use 9.8. Sine and cosine, and we got that. Okay, using those three things, we can solve for the person's force. So I'm going to plug this into my calculator, and let's see what Mr. Buttons tells me. Alrighty, 45 times, where are we? Uh, 45 times 0.2 times 9.8 times cosine, 31 plus 45 times 9.8 times sine 31. Boop, beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. What do we get? Let's see. This all comes out to 302 
0.7 newtons. Whoops, where's my n? Newtons. Force is measured in newtons. Yes, it is. And that is the person's force. Wait, why? It's like such a long problem, right? Why do we find the person's force? Aha, yes, yes, yes. Because we needed to write it down right here. We were waiting to find the person's force so that we could solve for our unknown, the power. So instead of those dots, you put this value, this one, 302.7. Okay. And with one more simple calculation, we can solve for the power developed by the person or the power delivered by the person. There's a couple of good ways to discuss or to phrase power. So you plug it into the calculator and you get 424 watts, like that. If you, whoa, uh-oh, Mr. Buttons, are you okay? If you're using sig figs, you would want to have just two sig figs, right? Because uh, 1.4 has two sig figs. So the rule of multiplication says just two sig figs, and that would make this 420. But we're not really too concerned right now with sig figs. So let's just leave it at 424. Good. Great work. Great work.